All right, you guys, in this particular video, we are going to be talking about finding the surface area of a cylinder, okay? Now, um, when we think about finding the surface area, of course, the first thing that we need to start with is we need to start with our formula. So let's go ahead and take a look at the explanation for the formula, and then we're going to try to make a, a comparison or see how the formulas for prisms is going to be similar, similar sorry, to the formula for finding the surface area of a cylinder. Okay, so it lays it out here by saying that the lateral area, L, of a cylinder with a height H and a radius R is the circumference of the base times our height. Okay, so the lateral area in this particular case is, if you think about a can, think about how we can take a can label, um, cut it, and then basically unfurl it and lay it out. I wanna show you a real life example. All right, so I'm going to show you what a can that we deal with every day would look like. This is a can of my dog's food, okay? Now, we know that this is a cylinder, okay? We're all familiar with this. This is one probably the most um, average uh, sort of cylinder that we deal with probably almost on a daily basis, okay? So, if I unfurl the sides here, okay, of this label, okay? And this label stands for the lateral surface area, okay? So, if I lay this out at this point and unfurl it, it sort of looks like a giant rectangle at this point. So the formula for the lateral area of a can is simply going to be that. Okay, so again, if I were to put this label back on the can here, okay, you know that it circles the entire, or it in, uh, encases the entire can. Again, if I unfurl it, it's going to look like sort of like a giant rectangle. So that's what that formula is uh, going to stand for. I'm going to leave this label on the can so I know exactly what's in here. So I don't actually open it and put it in my old pot. Okay, I'm going to put this aside for now. All right, now back to our formula. Okay, so the lateral surface area is going to be the circumference. Okay, also sort of known as the perimeter of the circle, the basis of that can, times the height. Okay, so again, the circumference, because remember, as the label that we just showed, it basically encases the entire can. So it goes around the entire um, uh, top edge or circumference of that can times the height, okay? Now the total surface area we know is gonna be S of a cylinder with a height H and a radius R is gonna be twice the area of the base plus our lateral area. So we take the lateral area, the area of that label that I just showed, and then I'm gonna take the area of the tops of your cylinder, okay? And that's like taking the area of a circle. So that's why it's um, going to be pi r squared. So let's go back to our reference sheet. So if we take a look at the lateral, I'm sorry, the surface area of the cylinder here, we have our lateral area, which is going to be uh, 2 pi r times h, which is what we just talked about. Now, let's look at how these two things are similar, okay? Now, from our prism surface area video, and if you haven't seen that, please go back and look at that. Remember, it's going to start off with 2 times big B, okay? What are our bases in a cylinder? The cylinder bases, basically, I would find the area of that by taking pi r squared. We know that formula. We've been dealing with that formula for a very long time, okay? Plus, that's going to be um, our lateral area, which, again, is 2 pi r. Now, remember, as I said, 2 pi r is going to be similar to the formula for, or it is the formula for circumference here. Okay, and then I simply multiply that by h, which is our height. Okay, so I want to switch back over to um, the uh, visual here. Now remember, going back to my can, this is the, the top of my can here. We know that this is a circle, so to find the area of a circle, of course, there are two bases, one, two here, okay? And then add that to the lateral surface area, which is represented by my label here on my can, okay? And that's gonna give us the total surface area. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with some examples, okay? And the formula that you saw there on that formulas page, what they did is they uh, transposed the lateral area and the bases, but we know based on um, um, properties that we've been learning, the convenient property of addition, that no matter how you choose to add these things, if I choose to add 2 plus 3 or 3 plus 2, it's still going to give me the same answer, so I'm going to transpose it to make it look more like the formula that we dealt with in the last video um, for the surface area of prisms. Okay, so 
I'm going to try to mirror that uh, 2b plus the lateral area uh, formula. So let's take a look at this. So we have um, a uh, example here, number two, that is going to be more of the traditional orientation of the cylinder. And then in question number three, it's going to be a little different. So it's asking for us to get the lateral area and the, the total surface area. Okay. So let's start off with my drawings page. Now, on that particular um, drawing, actually, let's switch back. Let's go ahead and write down what we know. I'm going to be writing on the, the page. I know that I have a radius of 6 centimeters, and I have a height of 13 centimeters. Okay. Now, is that all the information that I need? At this point, based on that formula, all that I needed was the height, all that I needed was the radius. We know the approximation of pi that we're going to be using is 3.14. Okay, so if I switch back over, I am going to try to replicate. Okay, forgive my drawing as being too perfect. I'm going to label this as uh, see, six centimeters. I'm going to label my height. I'm sorry, my drawing gets worse. Okay, 13 centimeters, but I think that we get the idea. So I have my formula here for my bases. We know that the area formula for a circle is going to be pi r squared. Of course, there are two bases, so that's what's going to be multiplied by two. I know that I want to find the lateral area. Two pi r is the circumference of the um, circle here for my base, and I'm going to multiply that by my height. So let's just go ahead and start plugging in two. I know times pi, our um, uh, radius was what? Six, that's six squared, plus, and I am going to do this again, pi times r, which was six, and I'm going to multiply that by 13. Okay, now remember, this part of the substitution represents our lateral area, and this represents our um base area okay when i add these two together it's going to give me my total surface area so i do want to go ahead and write over here l was for lateral area and then uh, the surface area or total surface area is going to be s okay so now if we continue to simplify um when i multiply 2 times pi which is 3.14 times 36 that's going to give me one value 2 times pi times 6 times 13. So let's go ahead and simplify that out. So again, 2 times 3.14 3 times 36. Okay, and I want to put this in a larger set of parentheses. That's uh, 2 times 3.14 times 6. Okay. And I'm just trying to separate this so we can see these as clearly as possible. Now, of course, through the power of YouTube, this simplifies to 226.08. Do not round within your steps. You don't round until the end. Okay? Plus, when I simplify this out, multiply 2 times 3.14. That's going to give me uh, 6.28. 6.28 times 6 times 13 is going to give me the number 489.84. Now again, if I want to identify my lateral area, my lateral area in this case is going to be 489.84. Now we're dealing with area and our unit was centimeters, so that's centimeters squared. Now when I add up these two, that's going to give me my S value, my total surface area. And when I add those up, that is going to give me, uh, it's going to give me 715. And I've done these calculations off camera for the sake of brevity of this video. Um, the directions did tell us to go ahead and round to the nearest tenth. So that becomes 715.9. And the total surface area, remember we're still dealing with area, becomes 715.92 centimeters squared. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, let's see if that makes anything different. Uh, the light. Okay, so now let's look at our second example. 
Now, our second example was a non-traditional orientation for the cylinder. It was like it was laying on its side. We also have a slight difference in that we need to uh, sort of derive certain things. Okay, and what do we need to derive, do you think? What do you see there? Normally, when you have a line that is going straight through our base, when we have that line, that means that that actually represents your, <clears throat> your diameter of that circle, of that circular base, okay? So, what do we need, though? We actually need the radius. So, if I have to derive that, of course, I'm simply going to divide it into uh, switching back to my drawings page and I was drawing while I was talking, okay? Um, so our radius becomes 3.5 feet, the height. Now remember, when you're trying to identify your height, this could be misconstrued as your height for your cylinder. But remember, in a traditional situation, if I were to orient this this way, this looks more like the orientation for a traditional cylinder. Another way that I know um, that, that, that 5 feet would be my height is because of the fact that um, is always going to be parallel to another base. So what I've done here is I've shaded these in, okay? Now you just have to sort of, over time anyway, you're going to have to tune your mind to being able to visualize these things in your head, okay? Because remember, this base and that base in a traditional can situation are going to be, or cylinder I should say, but if you're thinking about the most common version of a cylinder that we see a lot, as I've shown you earlier, is a can the circular bases are going to be parallel to each other, and that's how you identify them. So the height of our, uh, of our cylinder is going to be 5 feet. Okay, so let's go ahead and start plugging in here. So I have S is equal to 2 pi r squared. Again, our bases, and I'm trying to just mirror the formula that we already know. Lateral area is going to be 2 pi r h, okay? So now I'm going to just start plugging in these things. So 2 times pi times, uh, let's see, okay, 3.5 squared, okay? I'm recording this video at home, so please do not mind my crazy dog in the background, okay? All right, so 2 times pi times 3.5 times 5. Okay, and I'm laying these out so we can just see them a little bit better. Now, you might ask yourself, Mr. Moore, why do you keep simplifying these things over and over again? I like to do that because it helps me personally see what I'm doing. Okay, 12.25 plus, okay, so one more time, 2 times 3.5, that's 7 times pi times 5. Now again, through the magic of YouTube, I've been simplifying these things um, off camera, okay? So this becomes 109.9, okay, when I simplify all those things together. So this, of course, is going to be my lateral area at this point. My lateral area is 109.9 feet squared. We're dealing with area, okay? When I add these two things together, they become... 186.83 feet squared. Now the direction said for me to go ahead and round to the nearest 10. So when I add these two together, this becomes 186.8 feet squared. 186.8 feet squared. Okay, so we have our lateral area that's just the sides represented by the um, label on that can that I showed you earlier plus my base area. My base area is 76.93 feet squared, so they could uh, probably ask you in a number of different ways. What is the base area? What is the lateral area? What is the total surface area? So we have our example here. Now, as always, if you have any additional questions, please back this video up. Um, you may come to class or to a check-in or tutorial session with a question that I'm happy to answer. Um, and as always, you guys, I will see you soon.